Well, welcome everyone to this Circle of Entrepreneurs Do Well, Do Good talk series. Uh, my name is Chris Baker. I'm the Managing Director of the Circle of Entrepreneurs. Uh, the Circle believes strongly that business can be both profitable and a force for good. We empower people to drive social impact through and within the world of business by nurturing a community of purpose-driven entrepreneurs and allies. We're a global nonprofit movement that provides a space, support and connections for these individuals and teams to flourish and deliver impact at scale. Now, my guest today is someone who's walked the walk on the front line of entrepreneurship, having gone through a journey herself at the head of a team looking to leverage technology to drive social impact. Now that she's come out the other side, she's devoted herself to supporting the next generation of entrepreneurs within her company, providing guidance, training, mentorship, and support to successive cohorts of change makers internally. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Alex Bayou, Head of Growth at SAP IO's Entrepreneurship Program. Alex, welcome. How are you today? I'm very good. What about you, Chris? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I'm, uh, yeah, one of those weeks where I think uh, we were saying before, got a lot done, but uh, there always seems to be a little bit more to do. So uh, <laughs> trying to, uh, yeah, um, give myself a break, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, look, it's great to have you on today. Um, really fantastic to, to get a chance to speak to you. Um, and, you know, I know we talked previously about some of the great initiatives and things that you have going on. So uh, I really appreciate your time. Um, I thought perhaps um, just to start, um, if you wanted to tell us a little bit about yourself and your role. Yeah, thanks, Chris, for inviting me. So I am part of the SAPIO Intrapreneurship Team. And uh, SAPIO is everything related to early stage uh, startups and ventures with SAP. So IO means a small input for a big outcome. So we want to see uh, big things happening in our department and uh, we're focusing on transformative innovation. So I'm more specifically working in the new ventures and technologies department at SAP and we're building the future of our company and our customers. Amazing, very exciting. Um, and and actually, I suppose slightly unusual to uh, to have such a, a structured and, and robust entrepreneurship program. Uh, how does how does SAP's entrepreneurship program run in a, in a nutshell? So we actually launch a campaign every year, and we invite all employees to take part. So at SAP, we have. Uh, more than 100,000 employees. So it makes a lot of people to take part. Wow. And we're trying to engage with all these employees to make them more innovative, more creative, more entrepreneurial. And so every year we're launching this campaign for to get people submitting ideas. Uh, how can we you know, change the world? How can we build the future of our customers? And, um, and, and how can we help them build the future that they want? So it's, uh, it's, it can be business impact oriented, social impact oriented. And, uh, and on a personal note, I, am, I was actually more interested in the social aspect uh, mm -hmm. when I applied in 2018. And, um, and yeah, I think it's crazy uh, to, to, to be able to give such a chance to employees to, to build their own company in their own company. Uh, and um, and uh, and yeah and and uh, and we're working with um, many many people to make this happen. Mm -hmm. So it's not only our small team of ten people, but we're actually working with a network uh, of venture partners and mentors that are helping us to leverage the teams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's a global program, is it? It's a global program. It's a global program with a step by step approach. So mm -hmm. we're launching it. Uh, usually we 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 prepare everything. Uh, in Q1, so from January to March, and then we launch uh, in March. We have everything taking, uh, I mean, everything taking place. So all the events uh, in different locations, um, on local levels, worldwide, and we're trying to, uh, you know, spread this innovation spirit across the company to change the culture. We really want to to get people more involved into these innovation topics and. And SAPIO entrepreneurship is definitely helping there to change the mindset, uh, to to help people to build things that matter, and not only for for them but also for society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's super inspiring. I think the uh, yeah definitely having the the movement. Um, obviously, that's something that we're we're very close to at the circle, and I, I you know doing that within companies is is often a slightly different challenge, right? So. Uh, 
so it's great to see the kind of scale i suppose that that you that you know sap are, are kind of driving and and as you said um i think if uh, do you find that when people uh, join the program that they're they're sort of you know they're inspired by that message of um changing the world um to the to be the thing that they want it to be um because that that feels really powerful yes a lot of them are uh, actually like uh, truly willing to change the world and make a difference uh and and to build the future mm. i they, they actually want to be part of something mm. that you know something big and and mm. they like a lot of them want to also be the founder of the next big venture you know so it's a mm. It's a mix of uh, a lot of different things, but I tend to see uh, one something in common in all of the, the founders. It's really the determination to make a change in their own life. Right. And, um, and, and that's something uh, very inspiring, you know, when you dare to try new things and, and take it to the next step. Mm -hmm. And so I was mentioning, you know, all the steps uh, that we have, and we created an entrepreneur journey. Uh, from having an idea to making it into investment. And so our entrepreneurs um, are running through all this path, mm -hmm. um, you know, from uh, starting from scratch, ju just brainstorming, uh, building your team, finding your co-founder, uh, working on your submission, then um, starting working on your presentation pitch, get, the, get it validated by customers, make more customer discovery, build your traction, validate your problem, your solution, um, like learn how much your solution impact your customers by, you know, um, getting KPIs and, 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 and key measurements. So all of these is, are very, very key in the process of entrepreneurship. And after validation, we have the acceleration phase, which is, um, I would say the, the most important phase for us because we select the top teams from all across the globe to be part of this. And uh, we created the Accelerator program, which is a three week full time program where employees are kind of in a fellowship mode. So they're, uh, you know, uh, leaving their job for three weeks and joining full time this program uh, to take their business to the next level and make it real. And wow. so we have the teams getting ready in three weeks for this investment pitch. Obviously, they've been working since, uh, you know, a few months before on the pitch and reiteration. So after nine months, that they have this very intense acceleration period. Mm -hmm. And then if they're selected for the final pitch for the investment committee meeting, uh, then they have to pitch again uh, the final one. Uh, usually it's a 20 minute pitch, right? So it's not that long, <laughs> but it's a lot of preparation to get ready yeah. for these 20, 20 minutes. And then eventually we're uh, making investments every, every year it varies. Um, but we, we always have, you know, bigger goals and, and, and bigger um, at outcomes uh, that mm -hmm. we want to get. Wow. And, and just so I'm clear, um, you mentioned, because uh, the, the process sounds, uh, super rigorous right and instructions to providing the support to these these teams to kind of go out and there and make that difference um you mentioned that you know that the themes could be business related or social related um could you talk me a little bit just just briefly maybe through the um one billion lives concept which i understand is is kind of the program that's in place at the moment um so the the one billion lives program is focusing on social impact Mm -hmm. uh, One Billion Lives has been created in 2017, in a, if I'm not mistaken, in APJ, and it was working so well that they decided to extend the model globally. Uh, and, um, and so I, I took part in, in the One Billion Lives program myself in 2018. Mm -hmm. I had an idea to disrupt the clinical trial market uh, by speeding up uh, the clinical trial processes. Uh, we all had um, in our team uh, the the true the, the the belief that we could make mm -hmm. an impact on speeding up fight against cancer, and yeah. so we started to connect with doctors, hospitals, to you know to make some discovery meetings and to to get to know what keeps what keeps them awake at night and why do we take ten years to get a new treatment or new medicine on the market. Mm -hmm. And um, and so and so we talked a lot with them, shared about their lives. How do they spend their daytime during the day? We actually went there during like a week 
every day to to see how do they work, um, like how do they organize themselves, how do how do the business process look, you know, and and where is it broken? And so we realized um, after uh, you know all this period working with them that yeah. we can actually speed up the preparation of the clinical trials, which is very manual currently. And it's all about uh, exchanging emails uh, to write the protocol, which is, you know, the document that you will use for the rest of the clinical trials during these 10, year, 10 years long. And so instead of having papers, Word document that you exchange for emails 1,000 times, uh, which is very error prone. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and then you have to use this, uh, you know, this uh, paper uh, to, to start your trials. So instead of use, doing all of that, why not? digitalizing it and just creating a platform where everyone can contribute right and and adding some machine learning and and new technologies that can actually boost you know uh, the, the the way they're doing it and and reduce the time mm -hmm. uh, you know to write the, the protocol so our value proposition was instead of writing in, in writing it in two years you will actually need now um, like maybe six months or even less. You know, because everything is automated and easier, more accessible, and and um, and and yeah, and and so we. It, it, what is very interesting to understand with this idea is that it's not us coming up with uh, that idea to transform the world. It's actually seeing the pain of other people and and trying to solve it and like solving solving the big problems of people. Mm -hmm. And and also, kind of um, making their dreams come true, you know. Because when talking to doctors, we were asking them like, "What's your biggest dream? Uh, what's like, and like, what's keep what keeps you awake at mm. night?" And they were saying, "Yeah, I can't can't even sleep during the weekends because I have to prepare my next free clinical trials and I have to start crafting my protocol and it takes so much time. But I need to work on that because we need to make something." Uh, about cancer, right? Yeah. And uh, and not only cancer, but all of the the disease and uh, and 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 so on. Because clinical trials is not only for cancer, right? It's it's for all of the medicines and treatments mm -hmm. and so on. So so this way we could have an impact not only on cancer, but also on like all of, you know all of the health yeah. uh, problems in general. So we were like, okay, this is like even one times. Uh, bigger, it has even more impact that we, we would have thought. So we were like completely in immersion in this project. And mm -hmm. and uh, and I went through the whole entrepreneurship journey from having an idea, validating it, accelerating the idea. So we went through the accelerator program and at that time it was physical. So in 2018, we traveled to Potsdam in Germany. Um, our team was based in France and I, ha I, I had a team uh, with several, seven members, wow. very diverse, uh, you know, um, uh, designer, um, developers, uh, pre-sales, sales. Um, so business uh, and technical oriented. Right. And, and this diversity helped us to, to go really far in the competition. So we went uh, at the end of the day uh, to the investment committee meetings with uh, with five other teams that were selected across the globe. And uh, one of the teams uh, was selected and received investment at the end. And we didn't get investment. So it was, um, it was uh, you know, like a dream collapsing. Oh, nice. Not only for us, for our customers, we were like so disappointed, so frustrated not mm -hmm. to get to the, to the next step. And we realized that it was because we had no SAP right to win. And, and the SAP right to win is everything related to why would SAP specifically invest into this technology? Mm -hmm. and, and that was the case for healthcare, right? Like why would SAP be the best uh, at solving this problem in healthcare? Mm -hmm. and, and we couldn't answer properly to this question and, and that, that hurted us, mm -hmm. and and so at the same time, SAP was massively disinvesting into this area. So it was very bad timing as well, um, and um, and all of this combined, uh, you know, it, it demotivated the team, and 
and yeah. uh, and we couldn't pivot because healthcare wasn't the, wasn't the the industry that the mm -hmm. AP wanted to go in. So so then I, I I started to work on other entrepreneurship projects, kept in touch with the team, and then mm -hmm. uh, and then finally joined the team to help other entrepreneurs to do the same. Well, th thanks for your story, Alex. It's uh, it's super inspiring, and and you know I I'd, I'd say heartbreaking at the same time, but you know that's part of the journey, right? And um, you know I think you've uh, the way that you've kind of stepped out <clears throat> to then support people in there their opportunities, especially driving social impacts, you know, feels like, uh, I suppose that everything happens for a reason, right, um, to some extent. I just wanted to to wind back a little bit to 2018, you, you, you know, you sort of explained why, you know, why you were so passionate about the topic. And, and would you say that having that social angle is, was the most important, or I'm not trying to lead you on, but, you know, in terms of the, the, all the different motivations that you could get involved and do this sort of thing um, at, at work, um, how important do you think it is that uh, there's a social purpose at the heart of what it was you were trying to achieve? Mm. That's a very good question. So I think, first of all, you need to be a real entrepreneur. I mean, in your mindset, right? You, you, you need to like experimentation. You need to like uh, hunting for new customers. You, you know, you, you need to have a, a certain mindset to start with. Uh, being business impact or social impact oriented, I think it's it comes first with this mindset of being entrepreneur uh, and uh, be like having a lot of initiatives, you know, taking a lot of initiatives, and um, and uh, and so I I think on the social impact side, it's definitely something that is driving a lot of people. It was my case. I was interested first of all because it was social oriented but at the same time i always wanted to build my business at some point you know so it's yeah. um it was a unique opportunity for me as well to combine mm -hmm. both uh and i think that all of the people that are applying as well with the social impact ideas mm -hmm. have this willingness like deep down they they want to become entrepreneur as well uh and um and I think it's a, an amazing opportunity to start building a business inside your, like, uh, inside a business because you learn so much through entrepreneurship. Um, you you get resources, budget. You you don't put your money at risk, right? So it's it's a lot of advantages that you you want to take and you you want to learn from. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I. I saw uh, really an, an ocean of opportunity when One Billion Lives came. I remember actually the, the exact day um, when I found out, out about One Billion Lives. I saw the One Billion Lives written on the board. It was uh, during a big event in Barcelona. Um, like six or 7,000 people were in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, our executive board member was uh, on, on the stage and she was announcing One Billion Lives. And I was like, hmm. This, this name sounds very interesting. You know, it's about people, it's about lives. It's, it sounds big. <laughs> so what is it about? And, uh, and she was like, it was a call for ideas. And it was like January, 2018. And I was like, wow, this sounds amazing. I want to be part of that. And, and then, you know, the whole story, right? So yes. I think it's um, like... Yeah, I think One Billion Lives is doing an amazing job at uh, attracting people that want to do things and be build things that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, and most of them are very entrepreneurial. We still have some people that don't necessarily have the entrepreneurial mindset, but apply. But we we actually want to help these people to build this mindset because we see that they're, you know, they're willing to to do so, but mm -hmm. they're missing some 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 steps or some resources or yeah. like they, they they need to to find a way they need to know the way and so th that's why we created that entrepreneurship journey yeah. and by the way i i'm also currently preparing an entrepreneurship guide so i realized myself going through this experience that mm -hmm. you know like you, you don't know where to go you don't know what to do at what point of time and you're all constantly wondering if you're at the good stage if you're going as uh, like fast enough etc yeah and so i was thinking how can we document all of this you know so that people can actually 
go into that, uh, you know, that, that thing and find all the answers. And I was thinking of creating that entrepreneurship guide so that mm. people know exactly what they have to do step by step from, from the mindset, starting with the mindset and, and then crafting your idea, building your idea until investment. And then how do you launch your business eventually and scale it, yeah. and make it successful? So, so I'm, I'm working currently with the, our network of venture partners, mentors, uh, business angels, um, external uh, contributors that will actually um, you know, help us to, to build this book and make it available to all employees at SAP so wow. that they have you know, the more strength to, to, to build the next big thing for SAP. That's amazing. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, to reading it and, and, and uh, you know, kind of uh, hearing about it um, wh wh when it's ready, Alex. Um, I, I just from that, as maybe as a final question, um, what would be your biggest piece of advice to uh, somebody starting on that journey right now? If you could pick one thing from that, that kind of future guide, what would be your biggest uh, piece? I, of the, my advice is to never give up. Mm. Never give up because uh, we, even if your idea is rejected, um, I mean, it depends why, and you need to figure out why, and you need to chase people to know why uh, your, your idea is not going to the next step, because mm -hmm. then you can make better decision on if you need to pivot or if you need to give up on the mm -hmm. idea. And, and giving up is not a bad thing, right? It's actually sometimes even like uh, stronger to give up rather than just fighting for something that will never happen. So so yeah, so never, never give up on the purpose. It's not about having an idea and you should not fall in love with your idea. It's really about what's your main goal, what's your like somehow like life goal, right? Like what do you really want to achieve? And that's something that you need to know and to ask yourself and only yourself, right? It's not a team decision for that. It's really like an individual decision. So, so yeah, so just like don't give up, uh, challenge yourself. Uh, and um, and uh, and know know when to give up as well uh, yeah. when when times come. Amazing. And, and if people want more feedback, um, like I'll grab a coffee with me. Don't hesitate to directly <laughs> ping me on LinkedIn, and I will be happy to organize something with you guys. Amazing, great, and I'm sure we'll have lots of people will take you up on that, Alex. I think um, it's been. I just wanted to say a huge thanks. It's been great to hear your story um in in some detail today and what inspired you the power of the movement and and you kind of where you're at now and uh, and, and what's next so um really exciting conversation um thank you so much for your time today and and for talking to us um and uh, we look forward to, to speaking again in the future um and hearing all about the guide and uh, and other initiatives that you have underway thanks chris thanks so much for the invitation it was a pleasure Thanks, Alex. And for everybody else, just um, do watch out for our next uh, in the series of conversations um, on this channel. Um, and we'll also be um, posting some events and some exciting things coming up soon um, ahead of Christmas. So uh, looking forward to seeing you all at an event soon. Um, but for now, um, thank you and take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.